Got here in 45 minutes flat from Charing Cross. Not so bad, eh? Hello there. Uh, welcome to the Ancestral. I'm the old boy's nephew, by the way, Bernard. Yes. Yes, I know. What are you doing here? Oh, I see the old man invited you, did he? No, no, young you, actually. Oh. Uh, you too, I gather. She told me about you. It's a Chevrolet Mulliner, ain't it? Or may I call you Sasha? Bit of a mouthful of whole thing, what? <laughs> you don't mind, do you? I do, rather, yes. I prefer Mr. Mulliner, if the five syllables aren't too much for you. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Good. Ah, you got here, then. Clearly. Uh, any sign of the bish yet? <laughs> the Bishop of Bognus coming to confirm a bevy of the local yokels. Indeed. No, Father said he got a telegram to say that he was going to be latish, so we won't wait dinner. Ah, well, I might as well go up and start disguising myself as a waiter, then. <laughs> <laughs> I take it I'm in the blue suite, as before? No, as a matter of fact, you're in the garden room. Oh. You see, we've decided yes. to keep... I see perfectly. But the silly old sap didn't see at all. The blue suite was being kept for the bishop, but he thought he'd been elbowed out of the star treatment by Bernard. All of which didn't make for a very jolly dinner party. There was Sir Cheverell, brooding over what he thought was a snub. There was me, brooding over Sir Cheverell, and Father was in one of his fouler moods. It would be a night we had spinach. <laughs> Gah! What is this dashed, slossy, disgusting, slithery, gangrene mess? <laughs> it's spinach, Father. Then take it away and give it to the cat. You'll know I hate spinach. But it's good for you. Who says it's good for me? All the doctors. It bucks you up when you haven't got enough haemoglobins. I've got plenty of haemoglobins. More than I know what to do with. It's full of iron, Uncle. Iron? Iron? To take me for a sword swallower? <laughs> Are you under the impression that I'm an ostrich and I should browse on iron? Perhaps you'd like me to tuck away a few doorknobs or a couple of pairs of roller skates or a small portion of tin tacks. <laughs> iron, forsooth. Bring some. Eat your spinach. <laughs> Your nice spinach immediately, <laughs> Branson. Hey! 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 <laughs> what have we here? Ah. <laughs> spinach, eh? Mm -hmm. Capital, capital. Full of iron, I believe. And highly recommended by the medical profession. Branson. <laughs> Branksome, I shall wish to speak to you in your study immediately after dinner. <laughs> you can imagine how I felt about this change in Sir Cheverell. I didn't like it one bit. And after dinner, I went and took it out on the piano with one of those Russian pieces that needs a good deal of overhand drive. It relieved my nerves. And by the time Sir Cheverell came out of Father's study, I was ready for him. Do sit down. <laughs> well, I put your father in his place at dinner. What? Put him right where he belongs, I think. He's not so hot. The way you talked about him, anybody would think he was the real ginger. Quite the reverse, I found. A softer spoken old bird as one could wish to meet. The moment I told him of our engagement, he came up to me, rubbed his head against my legs and rolled over with his paws in the air. <laughs> Our engagement. Oh, I see. You told him we were engaged, did you? I certainly did. Well, you can jolly well go back and tell him you were talking through the top of your hat. Uh, that last remark again, if you please. Certainly. A hundred times, if you wish. Get this well into your fat head. Memorise it, if you will. If necessary, write it on your cuff. I won't <laughs> marry you. I wouldn't marry you for a substantial bet or to please an old school friend. So there. <laughs> This sounds like the bird. It is the bird. Are you really giving me the old raspberry? I am. Don't you love your little Sir Cheverell? I think my little Sir Cheverell is a mess, so there. You said that. And 
shall say it again as many times as I wish. So there. So there, so there, so there, so there, so there! But why? Bernard. Yes, that's it. Well, we'll soon fix him. The silly chump had got it wrong again. Off he went to the blue suite to wait for OB and give him the full force of his new iron will. And a good long wait he was in for. Because, as I said, the blue suite was reserved for the bish, not Bernard. I am so sorry, my dear Colonel, to have kept you up this late. It was the carburetor, I understand. Pray don't mention it, my dear Bishop. <clears throat> well, uh, here we are. Ah. Ah, oh, thank you. I, um, I uh, feel sure that tomorrow I shall be less fatigued and in a position to meet the rest of your guests. There's only one besides my nephew Bernard, young fellow named Malina. Uh, Maligan? Malina. Ah, yes. Malina. Malina. You'll be quite comfortable, my dear Bishop. I am convinced of it, my dear. <laughs> Good night, my dear Bishop. Good night, my dear Colonel. <laughs>